Hi, I hope your week is going good so far. Um, I looked at the results from the last test and it looked like um, a couple of you struggled a bit on aggregate demand. So I thought I would uh, start off uh, this week or towards the front end of this material by uh, making sure we've got a firm foundation. Um, there are other videos on aggregate demand, aggregate supply that you can reference back to as you go through the last two weeks. Um, it's really going to continue to build on the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. So um, for starters, um, you should be able to draw this from memory pretty easy, uh, what I call home base in macroeconomics. So our basic um, model here has real GDP being measured on the horizontal axis and the price level being measured on the vertical axis. And it looks like there's a little bit of glare there, but there, that might look a little better. Um, and the three curves that we have are uh, one, the aggregate demand curve, which takes care of our cigarettes, C plus I plus G plus X, is the players that are involved in the economy. So consumption from households, investment from businesses, uh, the government purchasing weapons of mass destruction and other things, and uh, net exports. So those are the things that end up shifting. So you want to think about that being the demand for all final goods and services uh, in the United States, for instance. Um, the supply of those things is really fixed in quantity in the long run. So the long run aggregate supply curve is vertical at the economy's potential level of real GDP. And therefore changes in aggregate demand would lead to changes in the price level ultimately without there being true changes in the resource base or technology. So some of the things that will shift the long run aggregate supply, the nation's prosperity if you will, is changes in land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, those basic resources. As those increase, then the economy's potential increases. Finally, the short run aggregate supply curve shows a possible upward relationship between um, the supply of uh, final goods and services and the price level. And the reason it's short run is that once resource prices uh, catch up to output prices, then that is no longer true and we get back to this long run. So this is where some of the dynamic aspects of uh, changes in the economy come into play that we'll explore through these last two weeks. And so this is your home base. There's some sort of existing level of prices. So I might put a little PL0 there for the existing price level. And then we're at the potential level. This would be a long run equilibrium when all three lines cross. Now, if the Federal Reserve pursues expansionary monetary policy, which they're doing now, um, they're trying to get the aggregate demand curve to shift out to the right which will eventually be inflationary, right? So we would move up this way if re uh, nominal resource prices like nominal wages are fixed and oil prices and the price of timber and the price of land and other resources, if those aren't really changing but yet output prices are starting to go up, then we'd have some expansion of the economy. We would move, we would increase real GDP. Now, this is not today's story because today we have a recessionary gap. We're still in uh, kind of under capacity mode uh, given our unemployment rate being in the 7% range. Most economists would agree that we're not operating at potential yet. So, but that's the, that's the framework that we use to try to explain some of these real world um, stories going on and unveiling themselves uh, every day, it seems like. So, um, just to kind of complete this thought then, so if the economy moves from A to B in the short run, uh, as those resource prices start to increase, 
then we move to a point like C. So in the long run, we're always, the economy is gravitating towards where that uh, long run aggregate supply and short run, or I guess there's not a long run, but the aggregate demand curve is intersecting. And so that's kind of a helpful focal point to think about the adjustment of the economy. In this case, uh, in the short run moving from A to B, in the longer run moving from B to C. In reality, these things are probably moving together. And so there's some sort of path if we think that resource prices lag behind output prices, then maybe the path is something like this, right? So they're both simultaneously moving. Uh, it's more by a function of the mechanics of this happening and then this happening, the story that we're telling based on resource prices being fixed. I know that's a lot, uh, but hopefully that helps set the stage for the additional material we're going to get into. Um, make sure to ask me if you've got some questions. Um, again, there's some other videos I might be able to point you to. If there's a sp particular topic, I might be able to just say, check out this video. Um, if I can't just um, you know, answer it fairly shortly um, at the time. So good luck, and uh, we'll keep rolling here all the way to week eight and, and uh, be wrapping up. Bye.